Brad was, uh, he was intense about almost everything that he had to do. You know, I mean, he would, uh, and he was, as I say, he was eccentric, and so much so that uh, John Hurt used to be in awe of him because John liked to be eccentric. And uh, I've never really ever in my entire career have, had an actor who has, who has put so much into, in, into a role. Because he was the first person I saw doing all those sort of intensely tedious, methody things like standing on his head and things and uh, doing deep breathing before every shot and so on. And in fact, it was one time I was, uh, I thought I'd get him back and I was on the set and I was going like this. And he said, what are you doing, John? And I said, what do you mean, what am I doing? He said, well, what are you doing with your hands? I said, I'm doing my exercises before the shot. And he said, I've written some pages to give you an idea of what the character is. And I'm thinking, oh God, you know, an actor with pages, why don't I just kill myself, you know? throw myself out of the car on the Merritt Parkway. So I got in the car to drive back to New York and I started, well it wasn't pages, it was a full script. And I started to read it in the car and I'm turning the pages and I'm going, what would I write on the next page? And I turned the page and it would be there. Or some close variation on it. And I, it was like really amazing and I called him from the car and I said we should really write this together. Okay, so you're making the cheesy scramble eggs. Okay, so I'm putting cheese in with the beating of the eggs? Not yet. Huh. You're just beating the eggs out. That's like a carry away. You know, I, I believe that I do have a story for you gentlemen. Why, Bob, you got to tell a story. When he's drunk, he's either clearly happy and then suddenly vicious as he is in the bar scene or when he's not drunk, he's trying to recover from the hangover, which is basically looking forward to having drinks again. Bobby has this big, you know, these big grand ideas of himself being this, you know, prophet, this teacher, and... And everyone loves that about him, because he is so, like, extra extraordinary, you know? He's extraordinary. Now, when this young, innocent person comes into their lives, he feels like, come on, man. Be easy on her. Her mother just passed away. And she walked into this restaurant to meet me because she was interested in the story and, and interested in working with me. And um, she looked fabulous and sexy and pretty much like she does in the film. So we signed her up um, after that lunch. And then Christian Bale and Kate Beckinsale, you know, I just expressed interest and had meetings with them. Um, and they signed on. And uh, Alessandra Nivola and Natasha Malcolm both came in to read for me. And what was so special about Alessandra Nivola was that he came in with his guitar and played a couple, um, not a couple, he played one song and it was, it was beautiful. Charles Schneer, my producer, he used to have a habit of cutting out different things from the paper. And he cut out the sections about flying saucers and said, can't we make a picture about flying saucers? And I was all for it. I remember reading a number of books on uh, the sightings, and some of them seemed very valid, and some of them seemed a little, shall we say, way out. Uh, but we tried to keep a, a, a balance so that they had a certain amount of logic uh, that we know. Otherwise, I think you lose your audience. The spider's mind is informing you of who these people are. And Spider's mind is very complex, so there's no reason why they shouldn't be very complex characters. I mean, he's not stupid, but his ways, of, his ways of thinking, his ways of expressing himself are very disturbed and, and repressed. That also was a surprise. I mean, that was something that was not in the script. Uh, it was something that Rafe suddenly started to do in one take. One of the things I wanted to uh, ask you too was being back in Texas, did that help you get into your character, just being in that world oh, where sure. we were? Oh, sure. You know? Yeah, it's different. Yes. It feels different and it smells different. Um, you understand why people move the way that they do. I was immediately drawn to the character of Bailey. I, I felt like, you know, I put down the script and I, I was in a relationship at the time and I turned to the girl that I was with and I was just, I was crying. And... Scott was the first person we cast the first day of casting. Susan Edelman was our casting um, director and she's gone on to cast everything we've done. Who was the second person we cast? Was it well, Lacey? Lacey and Matthew 
we both saw on tape, they were both in New York. I was 11 years old. Um, I was living in New York at the time. I was in Les Miserables on Broadway, and I just got this script called Party of Five, and you know, really I think at first I just had the size, which was just like four or five pages of what I was supposed to read. When my manager called me to tell me that I had an audition for Party of Five, it was very exciting. I'd actually only been in Los Angeles for a couple of weeks and was really just gonna start meeting people and getting an agent and stuff, and, and my manager took me on pretty quickly, and I went out on a few auditions, and one of them was Party of Five. She read for us in the in the crummy office where we were always right. eating lunch, and I remember one of us turned to Susan and said, get on the phone and get a right. holding deal put with you, put this Put your sandwich girl. down. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, she, was, she was really lovely, 